Hey, welcome to Willamita Forest. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different today. So there's a really cool mod that came out. Uh, it's called Precision Farming. So I'm going to show you, I'm just gonna go do a little overview of it, kind of show you the different stuff. I'm kind of interested in this because it helps you with a lot of different things. So let's, let's get into it and I'll show you. I'm gonna meet you over at the field. Hey, we'll see you there. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the store real quick. Actually, no, let's actually do this. So, when you first load up the game and you actually have this active, what it does is it goes ahead and gives you this screen right here. And it kind of shows you what precision farming is all about. So it's a mod by Giants. Uh, they worked with the European Institute of Innovation and Technology to get this out, which is really cool. Because it kind of gives you just a little bit more of a how to do things like more realistic, especially when it comes to the soil. So in general here, the precision farming mod adds uh, more realism and aspects of real farming into farming simulator. This main focus is on different soil types with influence, uh, which influence the growth of the crops. Uh, the mod adds an overview map, which is dedicated to new, more detailed information about the soil. So basically what it's saying is you got this right here. So you have this new map right here, which gives you all these different things, which we'll go over here in our help menu real quick. So what it does now is it gives you different uh, soil types, which is really cool. So what happens is you get different soil types and each different type actually requires a different amount of like pH, nitrogen. Um, so like the pH balance is the acidity, so lime, and then the nitrogen is the balance of uh, the fertilizer. So it adds nitrogen to the field, so it gives you a higher yield. So kind of does the base game stuff, but it actually does a little bit more than that, which is really cool. So the different soil types are loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, and silty clay. Hopefully I said loam right. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. But yeah, each different type of soil needs a different kind of special treatment. So it looks like within this, you can actually get different types of soil. And so each different types of soil actually needs different amount of pH and a different amount of nitrogen. So they added this into the game, which you're able to basically take soil samples. And so without having to read all of this, I'm just kind of, I've already read it through it. So I'll just kind of tell you what it is. So you get this machine right here. Um, what happens is you put it into the ground and over here, as you can see, you got this soil sample taken. Hopefully you can see this, but it's this dark brown right here. Uh, it says soil sample taken. And you have to do this for the whole field um, to be able to get any kind of information from that field. And before it actually gives you the type of um, the type of uh, soil you're working with. So you actually have to send it off to uh, for you have to send a sample off to the laboratory. So it says right here after you can send the soil samples to the laboratory for analysis. A few minutes later. You'll see the results on the soil map so you're able to get the different ph and the different nitrogen levels as well as the type of field or type of soils in the field so here's the ph value that i was talking about so to be able to increase to increase the different acidity you have to apply lime which we already know i kind of know that we just are spreading lime in a different sense for the base game but now in this game kind of explains to you why you do it so here you can actually apply the pH level a little differently. What you can do is you're actually able to either do it manually, so you could put as much on the field as you want, or if you set it, that the spreader will actually spread the amount appropriate for the soil type on each area, even though the field has different types of soil. <clears throat> it can actually help out with that and just do it automatically. So it says the uh, pH value can be increased by liming the field. This is recommended every third harvest, which we already know that as well. By default, the lime spreader will automatically adjust the application rate to the rate required uh, to reach that optimal pH level target. Uh, but there's option, but there's also an option that you can control it. So if the kind of like with the base game, if you don't apply lime after the third harvest, you have a yield decrease. <clears throat> Here you can have a yield decrease throughout different spots of the field and have high increase on a different part of the field. So it's, it's kind of interesting how all that works. 
So it also depends on the soil top, like I said here, and then the pH level decreases after every harvest. So basically, lime with the base game, you just lime after third every third harvest to increase your yield. Or in this mod, you're actually having to, if you really want to, to increase the pH because in real life, as you harvest or as the soil, as you have the soil and the crop in the soil, the crops will actually suck all that nutrigen or the uh, nutrients out of it. So the pH and nitrogen. So you have to. So basically, with the more realism to this, I think is really cool is that you actually have to adjust it after every harvest you would like, but it's definitely required after three harvests. <laughs> nitrogen value. <clears throat> this is where the fertilizer comes in. So either manure, or slurry, or actually synthetic fertilizers. Um, they all mess with the nitrogen of the ground. And so you can see here kind of like a heat map that's been added uh, with the precision farming um, in this tab up here is you're actually to see where you're at. So instead of the basic blue, so the light blue, medium light blue, and the dark blue, medium light blue, I just made that up. But you're actually able to see the different levels of where the nitrogen is at. So higher the nitrogen, the better the outcome. So you want one or more stay in the green, red, don't have any nitrogen in the field, so you're not going to have a high yield. Uh, but also with the pH, as the pH, so with spreading lime and stuff, you're actually able to let any spreader do it automatically, depending on the soil type. So, it's not a complicated mod, I don't think. It's just a little bit more, adds a lot more realism to it. Kind of gives you that feel of, okay, I really have to watch my soil and I really have to make sure it's taken care of. So the yield map here too is really cool. It's actually it could show you um, different parts of the field can have a lower yield and then go to a higher yield. It just kind of depends on what the balance of the soil is with nitrogen and the pH. So here too, you can actually do the economic status. So after you send in a soil sample and you're actually gotten harvested and stuff, you can actually see what the value of the field will be. So kind of like, uh, It'll show you what your average is most likely is. It could show you what your potential is, uh, depending on the base of the soil that you have. So it's, it's pretty cool that you're able to see all that before. So it's kind of like the extended field info mod. Kind of shows you like what you can harvest, as well as uh, or the potential harvest and how much it is depending on the yield. But I'm thinking this might be a little bit more accurate. Because I know if uh, I've kind of talked about with the additional field info was they actually uh, you're actually off probably about three or four thousand liters because I'm not sure if it takes into consideration the uh, the fertilization state. So if this does, it could probably give you a little bit more accurate information because this this mod is saying that you have a little bit more control over your finance, um, especially when it says precision farming. <laughs> so. I'd be really interested to test that. So we'll test that today as well. I'm really curious about that. And then they also added this really cool thing. So it basically increases the efficiency of the workers. So you actually get two different types of buildings to do that. Uh, they each do the same thing. Um, so you basically have an RTK, RTK antenna on top. So it provides better for GPS information to the worker. And apparently they work 11% faster now. So I think that's really awesome. <laughs> I'm really interested to see that. So I think this picture over here just shows that if you just set a worker and go without precision farming, this is how far they get uh, when they're planting. And then with precision farming, at the same time that they were set, this one was faster. So at least by a pass in a quarter, it looks like, which is not bad. I think that'd be really beneficial. I'm just hoping they're more accurate. I know with efficiency, they're faster, but maybe with accuracy, that'd be nice too. So. What we're gonna do, so right now I don't have, I have the precision farming tab selected. As you see, when I switch through everything, none of my fields show up. I have to get samples done. So there's currently no sample soils, or no soil samples to analyze. So I have to go get that machine, basically test the spots in my fields and then get going from there. So before I do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the store. So this, the, uh, I'm going to do the, I'm going to place the worker thing real quick. So it's a miscellaneous and you have to go all the way through because I have different mods installed. 
So it's it's in miscellaneous. I looked before we started recording. But there's two different types. So we got the building with the RTK, or we got the shed. So the shed, you can just store stuff into it, or you just do the building. You don't have to worry about storing anything in it, and it does. They do the same thing. So I decided to go with this spot here. So what we'll do is we'll basically, when we do a field, we'll just go around this. But I think this will be perfect right here, just because it's almost centralized to all of our fields. So let's go ahead and smooth this out real quick. And then I will fix it up a little bit later. Okay. So I'm going to go grab that machine real quick, and then we're kind of going to do the soil sample stuff together. So I'll see you guys here in a minute. Okay. So I went ahead and bought off the soil sampler. So let me show you where it's at in the store. So um, it's actually in miscellaneous. Again, if you have a lot of mods installed, it's going to be farther back. It's not too much of a trip for me, I guess. But if you have a lot of mods still installed, then yeah, it's going to take a minute. So it's called a scout. Uh, I did try to find it in the... I thought it was going to be the EIT. I thought that was the going to be the category that it was going to be in. But it's the... Uh, looks like it's Isaria. So there's really no... Anything to do with it. I mean, you can buy it used if you want. If you have the, the used company. Or the used equipment mod. So I went ahead and bought that. I also bought a new tractor because I've been wanting to buy a... Medium tractor for just the far... Or for the animals. So let's take this back over to the field and get it done. Um, so we're just going to test this out together. Like I said, this is kind of the first time I've actually been using this because, I mean, it just came out today. But I kind of wanted to bring you guys along while I was learning it as well. So that way, if you had any questions, you could definitely take a look at it, kind of see it in action. Because mods like this, I think, are really cool because they do add that little bit more depth to the game. Gives you a little bit more to do. And it actually gives you that realism of and have more control over the actual control over the fields. So I'm definitely excited about this mod. Luckily we're in early winters, so the ground isn't freezing yet, so hopefully we could do this. But yeah, I'm kind of curious because I have lime on one of my fields. So I'm kind of curious of where my fields are at with the pH right now. Um, I'm sure with the nitrogen there's none because I haven't fertilized. Well no, I fertilized the grass. Uh, but I haven't fertilized the other fields yet. So, it'd just be really cool to see exactly where we're at. And I don't know how this works, so let's bring up the F1. Let's see. So, alright, there we go. So it can be used with a controller, that's good. But it can be used with keyboard as well. So we have unfold soil sample unit and lower it, and then square to take a sample. That's with PS4. Um, I think let's look at with the PC. Looks like you got to fold it, lower it, and then B is to take the soil sample. So, of course, I like using controller. So we're going to keep that up. So it's L1. Sorry, you have to push L1 to see the menu. So looks like you're gonna adjust it. Oh no, that's the door. Never mind. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, that's a little bit of a drive without time lapse. The time lapse, it's like ten seconds. It kind of looking at the mod. It kind of seemed like it could be on the mini map too, but I'm not sure. Just kind of some of the pictures I saw. We're going to go, we'll do this other field over here since it's completely done. We're still going to be messing with that other field. And I'll, I'll put out a time lapse for tomorrow. I'm just going to release this video today. So the date being December 9th. Okay. So unfold soil sampler. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and lower it. Let's bring up this. Okay, cool. So it does mess with the mini map. That's that's awesome. So as you can see, this green circle down there kind of shows you the radius of what you're going to be taking. So let's take a soil sample. Cool, it blinks. That's pretty awesome. 
and it shows you how many soil samples you've taken. So it looks like with L1 held, so it looks like triangle is to send soil samples for analysis. So let's go. Your samples are now sent to laboratory for analysis. You'll see the results on the soil tap soil types map soon. Okay. That's pretty cool. So let's raise that back up. I'm not sure how close I got to this, so we're gonna go ahead and lower it here. Make sure we got everything. Take a soil sample. Send the samples. Let's raise that up. We'll just drive along the edge of the field. So it does cost you $50 for each soil sample, so keep that in mind. I like that it does have it on the mini map, so that way you can kind of see how far away you need to be. Let's try there. Take the soil sample. And it does have a sound when you're doing it. So send that over. Let's back up right here. So a little forward. There we go. Okay, so I'm curious if I could take multiple soil samples, so let's try taking a sample here. Lift it up. Because it says send soil samples, so I'm curious if you could send more than one. This could be a little bit tedious to do, so maybe like if you are doing this in a time-lapse series or Let's Play, it might be good to go ahead and do this off camera if you want to use this mod because it will take some time to get all your fields done especially if you have a lot of fields okay so it does it looks like it does save all the soil samples that you have so that's good so looks like we're good here take another one I wonder if it charges you 50 for each sample or if it charges you 50 for a total amount. So I have three. Let's see what happens. So we'll send those over. Hasn't charged me yet. What's going on? So right about here. Okay, so it does charge you for each sample. So that's good to know. And it takes a little bit longer than just sending one at a time. So it's definitely up to you how you want to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this whole field done. And then I'll bring you guys back. So that way you don't have to sit here and see all this. Because, I mean, it is interesting. And I... Oh, it looks like it took a little bit of that field, too. Okay, that's a little odd. So go here. Okay. I'll see you guys here in a second. Okay, so I went ahead and did all the samples. So, don't know where it's RP. Oh, it even has the field info down there, but it's very small and glitching a little bit. It's kind of annoying. Um, let's get back into here. So, wanted to show you the soil types. <clears throat> so we have some sandy loam at the very tip right there. It's not very much, but it still has to be taken into consideration, especially for that part. And then we have loam, which is most of it, and then we have uh, silty clay. So each of those just uh, depends on the different pH level and the different nitrogen level that it needs to be at. So right now our pH level seems not to be too bad. Kind of looks like we're at 5.75 as well as 6. So kind of looking at this just kind of logically and just extrapolating kind of what this chart means, I'm pretty sure that it looks like between probably 6 and 6.75 is probably ideal, maybe 7 for pH balance. Because um, I know too high of acidity you could probably kill your plants, kill your crops, and then too low of an acidity level, um, they won't produce mu enough. I mean, they'll still produce because there's still acidity in the soil, but there won't be enough. So to make sure it has all the proper nutrients, you kind of have to make sure it's balanced. Um, same with nitrogen. So. As you can see, there's a little bit of nit. There's not very much nitrogen at all on here, um, and it looks like a couple spots at zero. 
Um, it looks like some of it actually has a little bit. So I'm looking to be probably max right now is 40, maybe 60 kilograms per hectare. So what we're going to do is we're going to mess with the pH level first. So I went ahead and I grabbed our lime spreader. As you can see within the little help window, it shows us exactly how much we have. So no values detected, so let's drive on here. So right now I have it applied as auto. So as you drive onto the field, as you can see in the little mini map, it actually pops up with where we're at. So it actually shows us the field. So if we go ahead and start liming, you can see it's going to be a little difficult because I already have lime on here, which is annoying. But as you can see, the pH level is balancing itself. As you can see up here, the pH value lime application, it shows you the goal that you want to meet, which I think is really cool. So I'm kind of curious as to if that's the whole field or if it's just based on the soil type. So right now we're in the silty clay area and it looks like it's applying it at a different rate which is cool and we're pretty much out of lime. So for the sake of time we'll back up a little bit go ahead and just F11 this. Don't tell anybody. Nope, it's not what I wanted to do. Lime. Right there. Okay, so let's get back to it. So it looks like it stopped and then it goes. So that's really cool. So if you go over an area that already has too much of a pH balance, it automatically stops it. That is actually really cool. But yeah, it says you could definitely control this manually if you want. Um, but for now, I'm not going to try to learn that. So it's just kind of interesting that you have to apply a little bit more lime than what it says you need to, especially for a base game. But it looks like it's balancing out the pH by itself. And so my understanding is that it will do it with the nitrogen as well. So we'll go ahead and grab a manure spreader. We'll grab the manure spreader as well and go over it and see kind of what happens. Because I don't know if you have to do multiple applications or if maybe just one, kind of like the lime here. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see that. My guess is you might have to mess with the pH or the nitrogen level. The pH level is fine because you till all that under and it keeps its balance until harvest. But I think with the nitrogen level, it might have to be applied throughout the process because it says to that you can only that it's ideal to apply the lime or the, apply the nitrogen. So any fertilizer within the first growth state. After that, I don't. It sounds like the mod makes it not matter as much okay so it stopped I do like on the mini map that it shows you what you're doing I think that's pretty awesome so yeah if we can go through and balance all this out I think that's work for us so increasing pH to optimal value for loam is 7.5 to clay, it is 6.875. So as you can see, the colors are a little differently different between the two field types. Of course, I didn't get to check out the other one. So it looks like up there it says application rate. So it sounds like silty clay takes a lot more lime to balance out. Holy crap, that took a lot of lime, didn't it? So yeah, kind of keeping these lines is kind of hard, <laughs> especially because I already have lime on the ground. So it does adjust it audibly into auto, so it's doing it 5.26 tons per hectare. So when you run out of lime, this happens. It kind of just shuts everything off. So let's refill that back up with lime. And then it brings it back up. I have to say I really like this idea. I think it's really cool. But it will it will make you kind of bring stuff up just to kind of look. So it kind of gives you more of an effect of a PDA, I think. I think it's really cool. Okay, so what we'll do, I'm going to go ahead and finish all this up to, this, to balance all this out. And then um, 
Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and put fertilizer in this spreader. And we'll just do that. Yeah, I think we'll just do that. So I'm going to cut forward real quick. I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, I just finished up all the liming. And so I'm over here just to kind of look at this because it was a very small piece of the land. Um, but I'm in the uh, sandy loam. And so it kind of shows you here, you need a 6.5 pH balance for this kind of field type. So I do like that the realism will add all kinds of different fields to uh, dirt type in the actual field. Because I'm pretty sure it's a little bit more realistic because not all of the, the ground is the same. So it does adjust the application rate and it gives you what kind of different field it is and how much it needs for pH. So we'll go ahead, we'll empty this out and put in fertilizer. And we'll go ahead, so now the nitrogen level pops up. So this right here, the sandy loam, let's do right here. So sandy loam looks like it needs, says 20%, 27% nitrogen. So our goal is almost 200, which makes sense. So let's pull up this, let's go to nitrogen. So looks like the darker green it is, the better. So let's go back to the pH. So it kind of looks like the darkest green is 7, but it also depends on the field type. So guess don't really get mixed up too much to that. Nitrogen is only going to be that black and white, so it looks like it's not quite 200. It looks like it's 140 is what it needs. So let's run through here. Let's see what the application rate will be. So if we turn this on. It's not quite updating, is it? Because I think you have to put it in waves. Which I guess makes sense. Looks like the edge is doing fine. So I'm kind of curious if you do have to get stuff planted to see. So it does show you over here the application rate is 666. Of course it is. Of kilograms per hectare. Um, especially for the value for grass on loam which doesn't make sense so it does switch depending on the field type so that's really cool as you can see it kind of jumping back and forth between the different types but it looks like just spots are getting the appropriate amount of nitrogen which is odd So I'm going to go ahead and do this headland and we'll go to the middle. I wonder if that'll change it at all. Yeah, because as you can see over there on the field, it's uh, changing in different spots, which is odd. I mean, the edge is looking great. <laughs> Because it keeps saying grass on sandy loam. So it does depend on the crop. So that, that makes a lot of sense actually. So it kind of looks like it'll depend on the crop type. Okay, so we'll go up. See what happens from here. It says apply default value. Okay, so that might be a little annoying because it detects the grass edge, which isn't a field. So that's... I think a little odd to me. So I wonder if that needs to be a dirt. So yeah, the middle is getting a good is getting a good amount of nitrogen, which is good. But the edge isn't. Hmm. But it looks like it's balancing itself out, so it's not bad. So we're getting to ideal right here with this. So it looks like sandy loam needs about 200 kilograms per hectare. So that's a decent, that's basically the max amount of nitrogen in the field. But as you can see, like if we stay on the grass edge, it detects that. So I don't know how to get around that. Probably putting dirt around the edge of the field. 
that might be the only way to avoid that. Because it won't ni put full nitrogen on the field because it detects the grass edge. So that's odd. Kind of surprised that the. I'm kind of surprised that it doesn't actually just calculate for the field. So if the grass was in the field, I'd get that. But since it's a grass edge that's painted, technically, it's not really planted. I'm kind of curious as to why that picks that up. So I'm not really sure a trick yet to avoid that. So I mean, I could just go like this. And then eventually it'll detect the <clears throat> it'll detect the grass edge and then stop. So it looks like maybe having a dirt border will help. I think that's definitely something we can look at. So I don't know if that'll necessarily change it or not. But as you can see, different ground types require different types of amount of fertilizer, which is good. So we'll go through here again, and it does turn itself off and on depending on the grass type or the ground if the nitrogen's good in that type that spot or not. So yeah, it just keeps detecting the grass as you get close. It's kind of annoying. So you really have to get onto the edge to avoid. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be a little exhausting doing that. I wonder if the GPS mod will help at all with that. Or if a worker will be perfect at it. Yeah, as you can see, you really have to stay away from the grass edge to make it count. Oh, that's going to be a little annoying. But I do like that it turns itself off when it's at the appropriate level. Probably for more added realism, you can do it yourself. So we've just about balanced everything, so the pH as well as the nitrogen level. Um, I'm kind of curious what happens if you plant it. I'm not going to because then I'll probably end up wasting a lot of time and energy. So I'll probably end up maybe showing it in a time lapse for when we get to planting. Or I should have done it on a field without seasons. Maybe I should have done that. But I figured I was coming on to Wilhelmina Forest today and might as well just do it here. So what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and, since the edges aren't quite done, I'm going to put a dirt border around it all to kind of see if that helps. Because if it does, then that might be the way to go to avoid the, the mod detecting all the grass around the edge and applying it based on that. Because then you're definitely going to miss some spots. Okay, let's go here. Let's go as small as we can. Go to paint. Let's just do dirt. Of course, I'm going to mess up some of the field, though. Just want to get rid of the grass. So honestly, that's probably why people do grass edge, or a dirt edge when it comes to their fields. Of course it's not. Because I plowed over grass, it's not going to show it. Okay, so let's go to here. Then we'll come through this spot. Yeah, even if I go farther in, it still shows grass. And I'll come and fix all this too. Probably paint a lot of dirt and then we'll go ahead and plow in a field. Get as close to the dirt as we can. Okay, so let's try that. Let's see if it detects it. Because obviously you want to stick as close into the field as you can. I'm sure GPS will help out with this a lot. Okay, so we'll go from here. So we're in the dirt. 
Okay. Okay. That's nice. So, if it touches the dirt on the edge of the field... It does well. Yeah, looking at this, it goes to the... It says apply... A yeah, it says apply default. Because I'm not quite touching the grass yet, so if I touch the grass... It doesn't do anything. But then get away from the grass and it does that. So yeah, it kind of looks like you might have to have a dirt edge around their fields. To avoid that problem, because you're going to definitely overlap a little bit, because you're not going to be perfect, when, especially on a curved field. So you get a lot of round edges, you get a lot of round spots, and you're not perfectly straight the whole time. So the middle of the field's not going to be an issue, it's going to be the edges, it looks like. So you're going to have to go ahead and put dirt around all of your fields. Which is going to be a little time consuming if you're going to use this mod. Uh, but I think, honestly, I think it'll be fine. So you drive off the field, and you no longer get that information. And you drive onto the new field. And I've got nothing here because I don't have any lime or nitrogen down. So yeah, that's kind of been an overview of this mod. I think it's a really cool diff I think it's a really cool mod. I think it adds just a little bit more to the game. Gives you a little bit more control, I think, over the fields. Over the yield basically. And so it looks like 125% is the max yield, but my guess base game with full application of fertilizer that's pretty much what it is. Probably if you actually compute it all out and do the different calculations for it, I think it's probably 125%. So this kind of shows you that it can be, and it is, as long as the nitrogen levels are right. So I'm pretty sure the yield won't come up until we have a crop planted. So you have to get a crop in there to get planted. So actually, what I'm going to... No, I can't do the F11 because it's not a field. It doesn't have a field number. So if you go to the fields, it says just all. I can't switch through any of them because they're not numbered. So that really won't work in here. But I think with uh, if we do a test on a map that actually has field numbers, it might be a little bit better. But yeah. So let me know what you think of this video. I really... It's fun making these videos. I don't know. I'm not sure why, but it's definitely really fun. But if you do like this kind of stuff, definitely let me know in the comments. I know in the last video I did the combine experience. People didn't really respond to that at all. Which is fine. I, I Don't bother me. But I do like making these kinds of videos, and I'd like to make videos that people like to like to watch, and they like to enjoy, and will actually click on. So, if you aren't already, definitely consider subscribing. Um, I bring out Farming Simulator time-lapse videos every day, and every so often I'll bring out either like a how-to or a let's play. I definitely have to switch up my let's plays. I'll have to find a different map for that, so. Normally my let's plays will come out on Friday. Obviously this is going to be just an extra video for the week, as I just kind of was curious about this. Um, I was really interested to see what this mod can do, and I know probably a lot of people are. But I did have fun making this, and it's definitely learned a lot, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> I like the idea of that. Especially if you have a little bit more control, it gives you more realism. Let's Plays will definitely be perfect for this. But if you did enjoy, please drop a like, leave a comment. I'm always happy to talk to you guys. And we will see you guys in the next video. If you do have any questions about this mod, definitely let me know. Uh, if I need to do a follow-up video, I definitely will. So with that being said, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go ahead and record our time-lapse video for this map. And get it out tomorrow. I'll get this one out today. So I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.